Welcome, this is an introduction to backboarding. So first we'll just have a look over the different equipment we're gonna be using. So uh, first we have the backboard. This is just your standard backboard. We also have the head blocks that we'll be using to secure either side of the head once we get our patient attached to the board. We also have our cervical collar or C collar, which we can adjust to the patient. Um, we'll have a look at this first. So as you uh, measure your C collar, you'll notice most of them are, this is a pretty popular C collar, you'll see a lot of these. Um, you notice on either side, you have this push to lock button, and on the back of the C collar, you can push the button to unlock those. And that's how you make it so you can adjust the C collar. There are four sizes for the C collar. They go from uh, tall to regular to short to no neck. And um, you will measure your patient's neck using your fingers from the top of their trap to the bottom of their jawline. And then you can lay those fingers on the C collar to determine what height of C collar you need. I don't find that the, the fingers on the shoulder works very well. Um, because most people seem to measure to the full four fingers for me regardless of whether they're short, regular, or tall. So um, after some experience in the field, you'll probably just go by sight on this. But once you've determined the correct size for your C collar, you'll then go back and push these in to lock it in place. So that's now snapped back into place and set on a certain height. We also have some tape that we'll be using to secure the head to the backboard towards the end of the station. And then we have two different types of straps we'll be using today. So at the test you'll have your choice of which type of straps you want to use. These are called spider straps and these are seat belt straps. So the spider straps are, um, these are velcro and they're all in one big piece. And the seat belt straps come attached, detached in the middle and snap back together and they have these little clips on either end and then they're adjustable and you should have five of these. So the goal of backboarding is to keep our patient um, immobilized in their spine so we want to keep their entire spine straight and secure as we put the patient on the backboard and then the goal is to secure all the major parts of the skeleton to the backboard. So the major parts of the skeleton are going to be the shoulders, the ribs, the pelvis, the femurs, and the lower legs. So you'll see that both of these type of straps secure those five parts of the body. And we'll talk about that as we go through. All right, so um, when you start this station, you're gonna start with your PPE, just like any other station, and you're gonna ask your partner to hold C-spine. What holding C-spine means is that you're basically just holding the patient's head in a neutral inline position. Um, so usually you'll just hold on to either side of the head. Try not to cover up the patient's ears so they can hear and you're basically just going to be sitting here holding the patient like this until the patient's head is taped on the backboard. Um, for our purposes for testing, we will be verbalizing that someone is holding backboard or holding C-spine and you'll have an imaginary partner holding C-spine for the duration of the station. So my imaginary partner is going to be here holding C-spine and I'm going to check circulation, sensation, and motor in all four extremities. So circulation means checking a pulse Sensation means asking the patient if they can feel you touching them. And motor would be, you know, can you squeeze my hand? So um, first I'm going to check for a pulse. I would ask the patient, which finger am I grabbing? And then I would say, can you squeeze my hand? I'm going to do that on all four extremities. So I'm going to check for a pulse. Please squeeze my hand. Which finger am I grabbing? But I'm also going to come down to the feet. Feel for a pedal pulse. I'm using the um, posterior tibial pulse here, just behind the ankle bone. Which toe am I grabbing? And can you wiggle your foot? Pulse, which toe am I grabbing? Wiggle your foot. Okay, so I've checked CSMs in all four extremities, circulation, sensation, and motor. I have still have my partner holding C-spine. I'm now gonna apply the C-collar. Um, so this patient looks like a tall, so I've adjusted my cervical, um, cervical collar to uh, tall. And when I put this on the patient, one thing I like to do, so the chin piece here in yellow, I like to start with the, with the chin right on the patient's chin. And what that will do is as you're applying the collar, it will help you hold their head steady. So I've, I've sort of pinched the collar and I'm gonna put their chin right in that chin piece. 
And then as I hold that steady with one hand, I'm going to use my other hand to bend and force the collar under the patient's neck. Okay. Once it comes out the other side, I'll pull that as tight as I can possibly get it and Velcro the collar. If it seems like it's not going to stick, you can, you can uh, tape the collar closed if the Velcro is not sticking. Um, for the test, you could verbalize that you would tape the collar if for some reason it would come on Velcro. Okay, so we have our cervical collar on. We are now ready to log roll our patient. Now this is really a three-person task. We have one person, hold, person holding C-spine, and technically I want two people doing the log roll. Um, for the test, we understand you're doing it with one person and we'll be lenient, um, but just so you understand the proper technique. To properly log roll a patient, um, one rescuer would have your arm on a shoulder and one arm on the femur. Another rescuer would be next to me right here and they would have one arm on the pelvis. So our arms would actually be crossed here in the middle. I would be reaching all the way over to the femur and the person here would be reaching across my arm onto the pelvis so that our arms are crossed so we're all in one unit. And they would use their other arm to grab the lower leg. Okay? The person who's holding C-spine will actually do the count for rolling. So they would say we're going to log roll on three. Anyone not ready? One, two, three, and we'll all log roll together, keeping the patient's spine as straight as possible. Okay? For bonus points, while you have your patient log rolled, you can also palpate their spine from the cervical spine down to the sacrum. It's not part of the station, but it's good practice when you have a patient rolled over to go ahead and check the spine. Okay, now we're going to log roll our patient onto the backboard. So once you get your patient onto the backboard, you want their head just below this hole at the top of the backboard. It might be hard to see in the video, but there's a hole at the top. We want our patient's head just below that. One thing that's going to help me get my patient onto the backboard is to make sure it's kind of snug under the patient. And I'm also going to tilt it up as I push my patient onto the backboard. So we're going to log roll back down on three. One, two, three. Okay. Now as you can see, my patient's a little bit lopsided on the backboard. So I'm going to do what's called the long axis drag to center my patient on the backboard. I can't just push them over. If I try to push them to the side, I'm going to make their spine um, become misaligned. So to keep that spine aligned, I can either pull them towards their head or I can pull them down towards their feet. You typically have two people doing this. One person would grab the shoulders, one person would grab the hips. Since my mannequin here weighs a lot less than a real person, I shouldn't have any trouble doing this on my own. So I'm going to hold the backboard with my foot. Uh, the person on the head would technically make the calls, but since I'm being tested on this station, I'll make the calls for how far we're going to move the patient in what direction. So we're going to pull the patient up and slightly to the right, about six inches. On three, anybody not ready? One, two, three. Okay. Now we'll pull the patient um, down and to the right again. About, we'll probably go about eight inches this time. I'm going to hold the backboard with my knee. Grab him by the hips on three, anybody not ready? One, two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to check my alignment. Looks like we're in the middle. I'm going to come down about an inch because his head is just on top of the hole at the top of the backboard. So I'm going to come down about an inch on three, anybody not ready? One, two, three. Okay, now for the legs, I can just pick these up and put them on the backboard. It's not going to move the spine at all. All right, so at this point, I have my patient centered on the backboard head just below the hole. I am ready to now start securing the patient. I think for this first round we will use the seat belt straps. So that's these orange straps here. People usually have a strong preference for one over the other and it seems like their preference relies on which type of straps they learn to use first. So um, that's one thing that you'll just have to figure out and see which ones you like. You may also work somewhere where you have to use a certain type. So I usually suggest people practice with both so you can learn how. So the first two seat belt straps are going to secure the shoulders and the rib cage. So I'm going to take my strap and I like to use the long end. If I use the short end, the buckle is going to be right on top of the patient's shoulder. So I'm going to take the long end of the strap and there's these little metal hooks under on the side of the backboard along with the handles and I'm just going to clip right onto that hook. All right. This is going to come up over the shoulder like a pair of suspenders. Make an X across the chest and I'll just lay it there like that for now. I'm going to take my second strap. You don't want to step over your patient but it's okay to reach across. I'm going to reach over again with the long end and clamp onto the little metal hook, the metal bar. 
come up over the shoulder like a pair of suspenders, making an X. Okay. Now on this side, I'll go ahead and clip. It looks like I'm going to hook onto this clip here. Usually there's a bar somewhere where you need it. Um, sometimes you have to be a little creative. So now I can tighten this down a bit. I'll come back and do my final tightening at the end. We'll call that good for now. I'm going to reach across and hook this other side. If you get the strap twisted, um, these do twist or pivot with the hook, so you can pretty easily readjust. All right. This. Twisted. Okay. Tighten that down. Okay, and I'm leaving these pretty loose for now because we're going to come back and do a final tightening. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to the next strap. You have a couple of choices here. Um, you're, we're going to use uh, two straps. We're going to secure the pelvis and we're going to secure the femurs. You have a couple choices here. A lot of people like to just clip and go straight across the pelvis and then clip another strap and go straight across the femurs. And that sort of mimics the way the spider straps work. I personally prefer to do another X the way we did over the shoulder and the rib cage to secure the pelvis and the femurs. And it just has a little bit more versatility with where the hooks line up on the backboard. If this patient was a different shape or size, the only option I have for this pelvic strap is just right here. So if this is not across the pelvis, um, I don't really have any other options. Whereas when I go with the X, I have a lot of different options where I can move around to make sure that my straps are going across a bone and not soft tissue area. So it looks like with this patient, the iliac crest or the top of the pelvis is about right here. So I would really be going across a lot of soft tissue and I would prefer if I were going straight across to have it more here where I'm for sure going across the middle of the pelvis. So I really like this X reason for that. Um, these little metal pins on the backboard, you can put more than one hook on there. So I'm going to hook this one to actually the same one. It's just going to work out for this size patient. Making an X over the femur. So that has the femur and the pelvis. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm hooking onto the same metal clip as I did on this side. Coming across, and then this is going to hook down right here at the femur. Okay, this one, same way, and then I want to tighten this up. How do I keep getting these so close? Let's try again. There we go. Okay, and again, I'm just tightening these loosely. We'll come back and tighten everything up at the end. All right. Um, another really important thing is notice that I started at the shoulders and I worked my way down. The head is still not secured. I still have my imaginary partner there holding C-spine, but I did start at the shoulders and I'm working my way down towards the feet. This is because if a patient were to get sick and we need to log roll them to vomit during the station at any point uh, or during the backboarding, they're more secure. If we have just the legs secured and not the torso, it'll be really difficult to safely roll this person. Whereas if their torso is secured but not their legs, we can still roll the backboard and one person can hold their legs pretty steady and we'll be able to keep their spine secure. All right, so now we're going to go straight across the lower legs because we just have one clip left and we just have the lower legs. So we'll go straight across, tighten that down a little bit. Okay, now I'm ready to come back up and tighten all the straps. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, since this is over the chest, I want to make sure that I'm not obstructing my patient's airway. So I'm going to ask the patient to take a deep breath. So uh, this mannequin is probably not going to um, cooperate, but go ahead and take a deep breath for me. And when they do that, I'll tighten the strap as best I can. Okay, relax. Go ahead and take another deep breath. I'll tighten this while they're holding their breath. Okay, and relax. I can go ahead and tighten these others without worrying about breathing. So I'm just going to get them as tight as I can. One of the biggest things that people uh, make, mistakes that people make on backboarding is not getting the straps tight enough. We want these to really secure our patient. Okay, we have all those in. You can take all these loose ends of straps and sort of tuck them down here between the legs so that when we go to carry our patient, everybody's not tripping over the, uh, the ends of the straps. Okay, so we have them all tightened down there. Um, the last thing we need to do is, well, we have a few more things, but the next big thing we need to do is secure the patient's head. So I will use the blocks. I'm going to put these in the side. Now my, my remember my partner is still holding 
my imaginary partner is still holding C-spine. So what I would do is they'll have their hands here. I'm going to place the blocks. Okay, I have C-spine now. My imaginary partner will slide their hands out from uh, holding the head, and they will take over holding these cervical collar blocks. So now, they're now holding the head blocks. They're holding C-spine. My imaginary partner would verbalize they've now taken over C-spine, and I can now let go. Okay? Our next step is going to be to take the patient's head to the board. Um, I'm going to scoot this a little closer so maybe we can see better on the video, hopefully, for the head portion of this. Check that out later. Um, so to take the head to the backboard, um, it's easiest if you just go all the way around the backboard to make sure that we fully have the head secured. So the easiest way to do that, you can prop the backboard, the person holding the C-spine, we can lift it up and put it up on their thighs like this, but that can get extremely uncomfortable for them. Um, so the preferred method here is to take something, I like to use a packaged um, head vest, works pretty well, and we're just going to pick the patient up and slide this right under the shoulder blades, and this will just um, sort of elevate the backboard so we can take the head. So to take the head, we're going to start underneath the backboard. I like to start about halfway under. And I'm going to line this up with the forehead. Okay. Now, if I were to go straight across the forehead right now, like this, straight across, this tape is likely to slide down on the patient's eyes or slide up over top of the forehead. So instead, I'm going to come at an angle, go like down like this, and go across the chin. Okay. Once I go across the chin, I'm going to pull some more tape here. And I'm going to come back up at an angle under the backboard, again, even with basically the forehead. Now as I go around the backboard, next time I want to go over the forehead. So I'm actually going to come out from under the backboard lower, down here even with the chin. Okay, so I can come up at an angle like so. Try not to uh, get the tape in your patient's eyebrows, but medical tape's really not that sticky. It doesn't really pull hair out. So as we go around here, we're again gonna angle back down towards the chin, and I'll just tear the tape under the board and stick it so it's about halfway under. Now if you're inside a nice, warm, dry apartment like we are, um, one, one round of tape will be enough. If you're outside in the cold and the rain and the snow, um, you may need to go around the backboard two or three or four times to make sure that's secure. But for now, we'll call that good. Okay, at this point, my partner, my imaginary partner who's been holding C-spine this whole time can now let go of C-spine because we've taped the head down. The last couple steps to this station, um, patients are going to get extremely uncomfortable on a backboard. So to try to make them more comfortable, we're going to stuff some padding into the most um, uncomfortable places on the board. So a big one's going to be behind the occiput, behind the back of the head. That gets, that's a, there's a lot of pressure there because of this tape pushing the head down. So imagine just holding your head down on a piece of hard plastic for hours. Um, it gets extremely painful. So we're going to slide some padding under the back of the head. We're also going to slide some padding into places where people naturally have a hole underneath them. There's a gap right here under the small of the patient's back. And so we're going to put some padding under there to support that. And we're also going to put some padding under the knees to support the knees. At that point, um, if my patient's conscious, I can just ask them to cross their arms over their chest. So as we carry them out of the residence, we don't have to worry about um, possibly catching their arms in a doorway or something like that. If they're unresponsive, I will tape their thumbs together, and that's enough to keep their arms from falling to the side. And if they do wake up and their thumbs are taped together, they can easily rip that apart and they don't feel like they're tied down. So I will do that. At that point, I'm almost finished. My very last step of the station is the same way we started. I have to check circulation, sensation, and motor in all four extremities. So I would check for a pulse. Which finger am I grabbing? Please squeeze my hand. Check for a pulse. Which finger am I grabbing? Please squeeze my hand. Check for a pulse. Which toe am I grabbing? Wiggle your toes. Check for a pulse. Which toe am I grabbing? Wiggle your toes. Uh, and I believe that's it uh, for the backboarding station. So um, that's kind of the full rundown of a lot of details. Um, I'm going to next do a video and I'll use the spider straps and I'll do the station as you would be asked to do it for the skills testing without all the extra talking I did here. So check out the other video to see how you're going to be expected to do the skill and also to um, see how those spider straps work.